Welcome to North Iceland and another edition of Random Road Cuts. Got a nice little road cut here along the Ring Road, Route 1, that uh, encircles the island of Iceland. You know, a cold morning, not a lot of traffic in this remote part of Iceland. So perfect opportunity to go check out a nice little road cut here. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey out here in Iceland for a few weeks. And if you're new to random road cuts, uh, what we do is we stop at a road cut, we find something that looks interesting, and we just start working our way through it. We make observations, we check out the rocks, try to figure out their story, uh, make interpretations about how they formed, and then try to piece it all together. Oh, here we got a couple of cars coming through. It's like a tour bus and another car. I'll wait for them to swing by. There we go. So I think what we'll do here is we'll start on this maybe left side of the road cut and then work our way across. Maybe not all the way down to the end because um, it's quite a long road cut and it doesn't look like there's a lot of variability over there. But it's always good to start with what you know about the area. Of course, Iceland in the North Atlantic is a volcanic island. So we would expect volcanic rocks to possibly play a role here. Uh, among those, basalt is the most dominant rock type in Iceland, but there are other types of volcanic rocks. Um, and even within the context of basalt, you can get quite a bit of variability. The basalt can erupt as lava. It can erupt explosively and form ash and other types of deposits. This area has been extensively glaciated, so we may see glacial deposits. There's even little pockets of marine sedimentary rocks. So uh, volcanic and sedimentary rocks would seem to be the most likely. Not a lot of metamorphic rocks that I'm aware of in Iceland. So with that, let's just head over and uh, see what we can see. We've obviously got some, these orange layers, which are pretty prominent, a darker layer below. The whole sequence gets disrupted in this zone. So we'll have to take a good look at that. And then it looks like capping our road cut is some darker material. So let's just head over there and take a look at the rocks. I think we'll start over here. Uh, it looks like these pinkish rocks are pretty much right at head level or pretty close. Uh, the lower rocks are really wet and pretty grungy, but let's work our way through the angular angular footing here and see what we can see here. Um, I guess it's not quite at head level. Come down this way a little bit it is. So pretty shattered. These rocks are pretty um, broken up by frost wedging and different processes. Let's see if we can break one open. Take a look at it. So the grain size is fairly small. It does not look like this is a basalt at all. Uh, and the color kind of speaks to that as well. In places a little bit more reddish, uh, sort of fine to maybe almost sand sized particles. If we look at some of the particles though, there's these sort of little shadow zones of other particles that maybe look like they're either stretched out or flattened a little bit. Um, here's another little zone right in here. Um, so let's keep looking around here. I've got a couple ideas what this might be. But it doesn't look like a volcanic rock like basalt, right? It doesn't look like this was once lava. It's made out of fine particles that seem to be all glued together. And it's pretty shattered, lots of fracturing in here. I imagine the Icelandic winters are pretty rough on this material. Uh, I think this is mostly compressed, highly compressed in some cases, uh, ash, like a welded tuff, if you will. You can see a couple more of these particles in here. And again, they look like a lot of them have been flattened. And so these are sometimes called uh, fiamme. So these are particles of exploded material, pyroclastic material, but they've been compacted and compressed uh, as they settle. And then the heat of the, the ash itself sort of fuses and welds the entire package together. It's a bit of a grungy looking 
um, tough, but that's what my interpretation would be right now. Um, let's come down here and look at the underlying rocks where it's exposed. These look much more like basalts, um, these black rocks here. So these were most likely once lava flows. Um, looks like, yeah, most likely basalt here. And then we're getting into the zone we looked at from a distance where the pinkish layer of tuff terminates right here. But then we can see it picking back up over there, back up a little bit here. It does look like it's at a different position. So here it's higher and over here on the right it's lower. So it's possible that one of the things we may have here is a fault that's dropped one side down relative to the other. But we can see this entire zone, which is maybe, oh, I don't know, like five meters wide, maybe about 15 to 17 feet or so, um, is all made of this darker material. And of course, in Iceland, with all the volcanoes, um, one of the key features that carries magma up to the surface and cuts across layering, like we're seeing right here, are dikes. So there's a good chance this is a basaltic dike cutting across this pinkish uh, tuff unit, if that's what it is. Uh, so we can get a good look at the, the contact here, the margin between the tuff, which is just above me here, the underlying basalt down here, and then this is the basaltic dike cutting through here. So uh, very dense. It doesn't have a lot of uh, vesicles, gas bubbles, or other features we might see in a basaltic lava flow. So with it being very dense like this, uh, it also looks like it's quite finely crystalline. So even though uh, it, it was subsurface, it cooled pretty quickly because we don't see any large crystals in there at all. And then right here is where we have the contact, actually I guess it's back here, back up a little bit. Uh, we can see the pink coming in, but it's cut right here by the dike. Uh, and so we're seeing the, the dike contact with this pink tuff. Uh, we can actually see that right here as well. Um, yeah, a bit of a gradational. You can, it looks like there's a little bit more intense red color right in here where this basaltic magma intruded and baked and oxidized this tuff a little bit. So it looks like there's a little bit of a color change right along the contact, which is what you'd expect to see there. A um, little better exposure of the, the tuff here. And again, some of these flattened clasts or particles within the tuff. Let's see what else we get here. Some small, oh, here we go. Here's some small, small dikes actually cutting through the tuff itself. And again, you can see the more characteristic reddish color there. So there's some nice little smaller dikes cutting through. And then another one right here that cuts across the tuff itself. So we're using the Principle of cross-cutting relationships. Another one right here. Vertical dike that cuts through parts of this light-colored tuff. And yeah, I think there's a little bit of color change in places where the dike is in contact with the, with the tuff. Um, so we've got the overlying basalt, the red tuff unit and then we get into another i guess this is the same isn't it it's the same dark layer we saw below i guess what we haven't seen uh completely because it's a little too high and inaccessible is that upper layer um it does look like it's a little more resistant and hard brittle if you will and it looks like a few pieces of it have fallen off the wall 
down here. There's a nice piece of the red tuff. And these are very dense, very hard. Um, yeah, who's to say, right? Um, sometimes you get these very dense, finely crystalline basalts where lavas encounter glacial ice. It sort of quenches it, cools very quickly. So it's possible that that may be part of the, the story as well. Pretty nice little road cut, a little bit of diversity. And then it looks like looking down the way at this long road cut, we can see the red tuff. Um, it just gets a little bit higher on the road cut and not much diversity looking down the way. So pretty nice little road cut. So we saw basalt. We saw evidence of an explosive eruption in the ash, uh, ash unit, the tuff. We saw a dike and then a couple of small little dikes cutting through the outcrop as well. And this large one, it may also coincide with a fault because you can see that the, the tuff is lower here than it is on this side. So that dike may have exploited an existing fault when it intruded and cut through the rock there. We can also see, you can see the dike here, right in this little zone, has some very crude columns, fractures, like columnar joints running through there. And then here they're more horizontal, which makes sense because the dike's cutting through vertically, those col columnar joints are going to form perpendicular to the surface that they're, they're cooling against. So they're cooling against the rock here. Um, and so the cooling direction is to the left and right. And so those columns will form more or less vertically. So pretty nice little outcrop here. Uh, and a fun little edition of Random Road Cuts here in Iceland. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for uh, investigating this outcrop with me as well. Kind of fun. And hope you enjoyed this. Hope you can uh, continue to like the channel, subscribe, support it as best you can. And we'll see you from the next road cut. Thanks so much.